future is about the digital technology, about the new and advanced digital twin has been picking up pace since 2017. A lot of companies can see the potential application of the digital twin technology. A digital twin is a computational model that is a representation of a real-world entity. Instead of making changes to physical system or workforce or a company operations and cause chaos if it doesn't work, we create a replica of that system in the digital world that allows us to um, explore those um, opportunities and changes and their impact before we deploy it into the real world. The London Digital Twin Research Centre was founded in March 2020 and before that we already been doing uh, research to explore digital twins in manufacturing related areas. Why would a company adopt a digital twin and how will they justify investing into a new technology? So the center will provide them with the technology, the validation, the demonstration of the work and to bridge the gap between academic and the industry. So we try to develop a digital model of the smart factory. So in Middlesex University, we have this Festo Cyberphysical uh, Lab. It's an assembly line. What it does, it uh, assembles a mock mobile device. You can uh, collect all this data and uh, analyze it, apply different machine learning solutions. And that also can help you to optimize the processes, including how we can detect any potential damage and also if we can optimize the life cycle of the system. We are trying to build a digital twin that can be adopted as a baseline by industries that they can build their solutions on top of this one. What we can help that, we can build the foundation, we can develop the framework and we can do the fundamental research. And we have been working with our partner from Vietnam doing just that. We build a digital twin version of Thang Long Bridge, which is connecting between the North Bay International Airport in Vietnam with the capital. That bridge has been built quite some time ago, but recently that has a lot of damage. We help them to model the digital version of that, analyzing the structure of the bridge before choosing what is the optimal solution for the repair. When they intervened earlier on, they had a lot less problems to deal with than if they left it unattended or they weren't even aware of those problems. And those who adopted, they swear by saying that the benefits has been immense in terms of saving money, creating efficiency, but most of all, it's driving up productivity. So what's the difference between the conventional simulation with the digital twin technology? Modeling existing systems, that has been around for a long time. Physical and the digital were not linked at all. We're now looking to link the two. So it's not only a virtual representation of your physical uh, object, it's also the interaction between the physical uh, object and the virtual representation. We can consider digital twins of biological phenomena, such as the beating of the heart. We can also even look at uh, socioeconomic digital twins, which is trying to understand how uh, humans and social phenomena interact with technology. And so one very good example, of course, of that is all the work that has been done in the COVID-19 pandemic. Digital Twins is like an umbrella for all these enabled technologies. So we have Internet of Things, we have machine learning, artificial intelligence. They all come together within this digital twin. We are targeting what we call that is self-evolving, which means that the digital version needs to help the physical system to be better. How to make it smart, how to add the intelligence to the system here. And luckily now, with the advance of the AI, of the machine learning, that is very much doable. At Middlesex, we want to be delivering world-class research which actually solves problems. We want to do it from a position of, of ethics. Digital twin research could have potential implications for automated decision making, for example. I would personally couch against that and say it's really important that we have humans in the loop. The centre has its role as a research centre. But it doesn't remain just as a research centre that is reserved for a certain small group of people. The centre is there to enhance our knowledge and pass that knowledge on to our curriculum and our undergraduates and postgraduate students.